We're part of the local society called the Atlanta Society of Finance and Investment Professionals. Dustin Martin is on the board of the foundation. Justin is going to talk about living with less, which is very important. Living below your means. I'm going to be brief. A lot of the topics I'm going to uh, discuss have already been touched on a little bit. I think it's kind of interesting. Live with less is the last one, and so, and so, I, I don't don't mean that you have to have a boring life or live boring life. I think it means being smart with how you you spend your money. I've spent a lot of my career in corporate finance, financing investments, etc. And we're all the CFO or treasurer of our life every day. We all make investment decisions. That could be going to the Starbucks, buying a cup of coffee, could be determining what car you're going to buy or lease, where you're going to live, etc. But all that's additive and adds up over time. And so a lot, a lot of what's in these slides have been discussed. But I would stress, think about the process, okay? I will tell you that what I do in my personal life every year, my family, I have two young boys, my wife and I get together every November and December, and we look at, you know, what is our income potential, what are we making, what is our college savings for our kids, where are we going to go on vacation, et cetera, and that changes over time. So where you are right now in life, I would think about your next two, three, five years, what, what matters to you and what's important and how are you going to get there? Part of that's going to come from your income level. Part of it's going to come how do you decide to spend that time or your money? And then how are you going to reinvest in the future? If you go to um, the budget slide, say for example you make fifty-eight dollars or $48,000 a year. you got rents going out to where you live, $1,500, utilities, $600, car payment, $300, insurance, $100, and your discretionary or you have fun, $500. That $1,000 a month, if you compound that and you save that over 30 years at 6%, that's about a million dollars, all right? So you can think about this as your forecast when you're going forward and you're living your life. Each year, every couple of years, you need to, you need to think about this and how do, you, how do you manage your household finances or, or your budget. It's extremely important because things are going to change and you need to think about it as you're doing it. Not, not daily. Listen, when I was coming out of college, there was many different things I wanted to do. But over time, you have to build a process and system. If you do it, it will pay significant dividends to you later in life. Um, when you get a little older and you have children budgeting, and if you have a family, budgeting and, and uh, forecasting, et cetera, will have a lot more importance to you because then, you know, you have other um, uh, responsibilities and that again over the next say 10 to 15 years can add a lot of value to you and your family and your and your loved ones. Here's your general gu guidelines. I know Steve talked about it. 50% of needs, 30% wants, 20% savings. Those are general gu guidelines. If that m m uh, your income changes, obviously that'll change as well. So really that's all I really wanted to touch on. There's a lot of other things in these slides. Uh, I'll, one thing I'll, I'll repeat is that if you do have a 401k and you do have a match, you should at least do the minimum, not only from an investment standpoint or, f or a free money or a free lunch, but also the tax benefits. And that benefit over time is significant. So that's all I have.